Hi, this is Jeff Lewis. I'm the Executive Director of the Red River Basin Commission. We wanted to talk a little bit with you about a kind of interesting nutrient reduction strategy that we've been working on here at the Red River Basin. There's really been kind of two main drivers for us getting involved in this nutrient reduction work. One has been kind of looking at the nutrient levels within the Red River itself. And secondly, the big driver is Lake Winnipeg and what's been happening up there with nutrient levels. Part of the reason the Red River is being looked at uh, for Lake Winnipeg is only about 15% of the water that goes to Lake Winnipeg comes from the Red River but about 60% of the total phosphorus comes. So as Lake Winnipeg is looking at reductions in total phosphorus, they're coming to the Red River as their number one source and looking for us to try and come up with some solutions to help them reduce the phosphorus inputs to that lake. One of the things we wanted to do at the Red River Basin Commission was look at some potential new techniques um, for addressing agricultural non-point runoff within our basin. Our basin is about 75% of the land use is tied up in agriculture, so it should be no surprise to anybody that agriculture is our largest source of both total phosphorus and total nitrogen. Back in about 2013, we started getting involved with a group up in Winnipeg uh, that worked for a group called the International Institute for Sustainable Development. And a Dr. Richard Groshans, who had been doing some work on cattail harvesting within the Netley Marsh area for the purpose of trying to reduce the amount of nutrients that were flowing into Lake Winnipeg. About that same time, uh, we were working on some things down here in the basin of trying to look at making reductions in flood damages by constructing distributed storage sites throughout the basin. So part of our long-term flood solutions work came up with this goal of trying to reduce the flood by 20% by constructing a bunch of different impoundment sites. We've looked at and identified a total of about 200 sites, totaling about 200,000 acres in size that would be needed to be constructed in order for us to meet that goal that we've put out. We had this site already that was constructed down in the Boyd Sioux watershed district called North Ottawa. One of the things that we wanted to do is look at North Ottawa and try and learn from that how we could maximize the water quality benefits that those types of impoundments can provide. Hey folks, this is Aaron Oslin. I'm the project coordinator with the Red River Basin Commission. To build on the information Jeff Lewis outlined, I would like to introduce you to the North Ottawa Flood Impoundment. The North Ottawa Impoundment is located near the headwaters of the Red River Basin in Grant County, Minnesota. The Red River Basin Commission, in partnership with the Bois de Sioux Watershed District, is conducting research at the site to investigate water quality benefits and biomass harvesting potential of impoundments. The goal is to develop a natural resource enhancement plan for North Ottawa that incorporates water quality into the management plan. The primary purpose of the project is to provide flood damage reduction by storing water during periods of spring and summer runoff from the 75 square mile drainage area above North Ottawa. By implementing additional management strategies, the project is offering many benefits beyond flood damage reduction to the local watershed and the basin. This includes the creation of habitat for wetland plants and animal species, resting area for migratory waterfowl, downstream flow augmentation, and water quality improvements the Red River Basin Commission is exploring. The North Ottawa impoundment is unique in that it has been constructed with an interior diking system that allows for water level management beyond the typical impoundment capacity. This unique design is allowing us to implement various management strategies to investigate potential water quality benefits these types of systems can provide. In 2016, the interior diking network was utilized for water level management and the Natural Resource Enhancement Management Plan was implemented for the first time. 
The management plan designates the larger C pool to be the primary storage pool. The A and B pools to be utilized for moist soils management. And two cells, A4 and B4, for water quality management and biomass harvesting. In 2015, monitoring of water quality at the North Ottawa impoundment indicated a 60% reduction in suspended solids, 40% reduction in total nitrogen, and a 29% reduction in total phosphorus. With continued management, the impoundment is providing significant water quality improvements. One of the unique aspects of the North Ottawa flood impoundment is that we have the capacity to manipulate water levels in between the individual holding cells. This allows us to utilize the A4 cell as a primary holding cell to allow for sedimentation and the slowing down of that water to drop out some of that nutrient contribution. From that A4 cell, we have structures that allow us to manipulate water logs and screw gates to then funnel that water into the B4 cell where we have um, cattail biomass growth and we allow that wetland plant to take up nutrients from the water column and remove it from the, the water that is being treated within that cell. From there we can then send that water through the unique structures to any other of the cells for that natural resource enhancement to increase um, opportunities for habitat for shoreline birds and the, the migratory waterfall components. The next step for improving the water quality within the system is the unique opportunity that we have to, to then drain the treatment cell and remove that cattail biomass and capture that nutrient content that has been captured through the growth of those wetland plants and then remove that biomass and the nutrient content of that biomass from the system. This offers us uh, an opportunity to enhance the project's capacity to really hone in on that water quality benefit of these types of projects. The biomass harvesting was successful on a pilot scale. The system was able to be drained and the conventional forage harvester and trucks were able to complete the chopping and hauling without issues associated with flooding throughout the summer months. There were challenges in harvesting the cattail biomass, most notably the difficulty of cutting through low-lying plant litter. This dense litter forced a higher than ideal cutting height and reduced the overall biomass yield. Additionally, the cattail seeds were mature at this period of the growing season. By chopping the vegetation, including the cattail spikes, the seeds were spread everywhere. This added to the harvesting challenges for the chopping and hauling equipment by building up of seeds on air intakes and radiators. We were able to manage these challenges and continue harvesting. What we learned from the pilot harvesting is going to influence future efforts, including targeting a more optimal cattail maturity to maximize efficiency and avoid these challenges. Utilizing the biomass as a green manure is allowing us to remove and recycle approximately 50 pounds of nitrogen and 6.6 .6 pounds of phosphorus per acre of harvested biomass. By spreading and incorporating the biomass, we can build soil organic matter and provide nutrients to add to soil fertility. For the most part, the biomass harvesting was successful on a pilot scale and depending on what we can utilize going forward as a green manure to achieve the benefits of water quality and soil health, we can explore ramping up and conducting harvesting on a larger scale. The Red River Basin Commission is excited to continue this work in understanding the potential nutrient capture of impoundments in the Red River Basin. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for new developments.